To back issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. This is the comic book show where I take a comic from my past and share it with two people who have no idea what the comic's going to be and make for some fun conversations, we hope. Today we're talking about New Avengers Transformers from Marvel and IDW. Yep. <laughs> so this means that somewhere Cybertron exists in the Marvel Universe? Oh, yes. Or is it an alternate universe? Well, here's the thing. When Marvel was desperate for money... <laughs> Which is every year of its existence. I was say, so like 2000? I mean, like, yeah. I don't care if they're incredibly successful. They're still desperate for this money. That's true, yeah. They're a company. Why would I not? You mean I could have more money? <laughs> it's true. All I gotta do is sell out completely? Right. So Done. Marvel I do that was, all the time. Yeah. Well, Marvel was happy to be like a licensor. So they mm. made Transformers comics in the 80s. Oh. And in one of them, Spider-Man showed up. And they were like, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll I mean, a crossover. he's red and blue. Optimus Prime is red and blue. You, you and the colors, man. No, it's just because Spider-Man's their flagship character. <laughs> it so, is kind of interesting, though, that both of the flagship characters... Yeah, of course. Are you mean American characters all are the same colors of the flag. You know, what's ironic is that Superman and Captain America are also red and blue. So it's Iron Patriot. Like, so it's every character ever. I think you're onto something here. Yeah, right? I mean, I don't know, but maybe the Transformers were a, were, were a Marvel property. And they were also incredibly popular. They were, yeah, for a time. For I mean, time. you know what? The reality is, it's Transformers is an evergreen property. I mean, look at those movies everybody likes mm -hmm. so much. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's also a celebrated run of comics that after Marvel either lost the license or gave up the license. I don't know the history of Marvel and the Transformers franchise. Sure. All I can tell you is IDW, which is happy to pick up any franchise, was really happy to get the Transformers franchise. And they were rolling out, if you will, with a number of epic stories that use the G1 Transformers and went completely off the beaten path, telling adult-oriented stories, but with the Transformers. So it wasn't just like, it wasn't Optimus Prime dropping F-bombs and banging, you know, other Autobots. No, was, but I'm assuming he had an illegitimate child no, at there some was, point. No, it, it wasn't like relatable. It was just like about Transformers doing cool things and having adult situations that you'd expect from giant robots that kill each other. Like more, oh. more, more characters dying. More characters dying. And more, uh, people wanting to have sex inside the Transformers, again, like a no, car. There, were no, there weren't a <laughs> lot. Like Transformer orgies, yeah, there was you no, know. That, you know, swapping that's basically type. just a junkyard, isn't it? Like, you just have a bunch of cars just sitting in the yard. And they're like, <laughs> they're swapping oil because yeah, apparently that's... They change lubricants. Oh yeah. my god. No, it's literally just that, like, <laughs> there'd be political intrigue. Oh. There'd be more bureaucracy. Oh, it's more grown oh, that, up. That, yeah, grown up. That sucks. Not adult. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> so, the Transformers <laughs> enjoyed a period of unbridled success from, the, from IDW, but nobody knew that was going to happen yet, and IDW only had like two arcs under their belt in 2007 when Marvel came to them with the idea of crossing over their recently invigorated Avengers franchise, the new Avengers, with the Transformers. <laughs> and so IDW was like, uh, yes. When I found out that Marvel went to them, yeah. I was like, are you out of your minds? Because like... <laughs> Well, they were like Ooh. someone at Marvel was like, I really miss having the Transformers license. We yeah. really screwed up. We, let's reach out so and we just, can just get a little see. bit of that magic it's, back. It's either that <laughs> or someone at Marvel owed someone at IDW a huge favor. That wouldn't surprise or me either. Or was really good friends and they're like, all right, this is never going to happen unless I make this move. That's, that, that is not far off base because when Marvel was in its renaissance mm. in the 2001-2005 range... Marvel could really, like, try new things and do different stuff. The idea of the new Avengers crossing over the Transformers, for me, was not the most creatively bankrupt concept I could imagine. Especially when Jim Chung dropped this super rad cover of Captain America cover. and Optimus Prime. By the way, same colors, which is why they probably yep. put them on the same yep. cover. Nice. But it's a sweet cover, which unfortunately uh, does not depict the art within the pages of this book. Aww. Yeah, prepare yourselves for disappointment, because this was a great opportunity, a golden opportunity, if you will, for the Transformers and the New Avengers to do something really, really cool, and maybe kind of ape off of the uh, the grown-up nature of the Transformers from IDW. And, and do make something. the art, like, really realistic and good. Well, just at the very least, tell a really compelling story about giant robots and superheroes. <laughs> You'd think that that wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> and yet, here we are. This is written like... by Stuart Moore with art by Tyler Kirkham. Oh, man. And, uh, <laughs> man, like, again, just, like, 
I, okay, so I feel like if the title of the book is Transformers... It's New Avengers New Transformers. New Avengers, the Transformers. It's, just, it's not even verses. Nope. And no no undertitle, no like, you know... It's, you're not gonna get a compelling story. You like, could have, though. Because it's not a compelling idea. For me, every every opportunity is the... Every every story is the great opportunity to tell something really cool. Especially when you're combining franchises. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, but that's gonna be, know, like, the exception. Like, who's who's on the tr who's on the New Avengers during 2007? Iron Man. What are we dealing with? Giant robots. Naturally, uh, Iron Man's going to build a Transformer, or become a Transformer, or the Transformers uh, are gonna make an Iron way. Man suit. They, they, you gotta have the Transformers are like living creatures. Yeah, I not, know, but like they're not just machines that like, you can just fucking build. No, but they are machines. And, like imbue with life. And Tony Stark has a really, really. Maybe he could like fix one. He could fix one, or he could like link with one. Or oh, they cool. give him one of those energon cubes or whatever the hell they yeah, are. Yeah, he eats oh, an energon put the cube, cube in his whatever. chest and become a transformer or some shit. <laughs> or his armor like gains like transformer sentience. Yeah, He's Stark like, gets kicked out of the armor. The armor becomes a transformer. Like, no, I we've like seen this. that already. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Ooh. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> but they don't do any of that. No. Energon does come up. Uh, hmm. Optimus Prime's self-sacrificing nature comes up, as it's really? wont to do. Yeah. yeah. Much like Captain America's. Yeah, but like I'm just I'm referring to the cube, put the cube in my chest. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this story. Wait, that's a self-sacrificing thing? I thought that was a yeah. sex thing. No. Well, I mean, it becomes one when we talk about it. But like in the movie, in the context. <laughs> you remember the movie? The 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 the, the cube is it, it, it could kill you. You know, yeah, I've never seen the movie. What? The Transformers movie. The first one? Yeah, no. What? I Wait, are you talking about the live action? Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. the, the Michael Bay the Michael movie. Bay oh, movie. yes. No, I saw that. Oh, you oh, thought you meant the, 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 the good one. Yeah. yeah. 86. No, that does not have Optimus Prime talking about putting the cube in his No, chest. but he is self-sacrificing yes. and does, spoilers, die in that movie. Famously. In fact, he dies, and then they were going to come out with the G.I. Joe movie right after that, and they were like, oh, crap. People flipped when we killed Tra uh, Optimus Prime. So Duke dies in the movie, and they're like, oh, let's just say that he was in, like, a coma or something. <laughs> and they were like, but the movie's animated, it's done. They're like, well, just put a voiceover or something that says that he's in a coma. So the movie, <laughs> he clearly dies, and they're like, oh, Duke's going to be okay. <laughs> so, you know. I think Duke's got something to say. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> Oh, I hear that off panel. He's fine. Yes. Oh, he gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> but those movies are well, that movie's way more compelling than the than the new ones. Although I don't know if you guys saw the new Bumblebee trailer. I did. It's freaking dope. It looks cool. I did yeah. not. Oh god. Yeah. Okay, I, so, I found out they were making a Bumblebee movie, and I was like, oh Christ! Immediately. No, that was yeah. my reaction oh, it's as well. A stupid idea. But yeah. then you see the trailer. It's set it's in like, the '80s, apparently. Yeah. It's, it's like a prequel. Yep. It's real Bumblebee. Yep. And then he calls Cybertron, and real Optimus Prime is there. G1, Wait, what do you mean real Optimus Prime? The one that is in this book and in all the cartoons we like and in that movie from 86. Like, real Optimus Prime. Not like... Not like flames and like murderous lunatic Optimus Prime. <laughs> he doesn't do that until out. the I'll with kill a, you! With a <laughs> giant one. axe. Please, Optimus, don't do it! <laughs> Die! <laughs> you understand it's for the good of Cybertron? He didn't even, ah! he didn't even say that. I, I like... In the Transformers movie, how Optimus Prime gets progressively more like bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty like Megatron. because of they fuck him over every like, single every time. Every single time, you're like, yeah, he's gonna be it's, sick of it. It's super dark, but like that's, I guess, how someone would react. So yeah. like, don't humans worry, constantly though. Betraying them. Right. In the third movie, I finally have my payoff. Where like, there's a better, uh, older Transformer. Yes. Who's, like the yes. old knight, mm -hmm. and he'll lead us the right. Oh, he fucked me over too. Yep. <laughs> You know what? My entire planet's culture is garbage. Yeah. Yep. That's and why this planet's should... culture is garbage. Right. Everything's garbage. Everyone sucks. Yep. I'm the only good man in an ocean of madness. Yep. Nope. It's weird. Was it the... Weird message, That's Michael how they... Bay. In, in, in Transformers 5, Optimus Prime should, like, transform... Or no, because Megatron turns into a gun in the okay. original thing. It'd be yes. a nice homage. Yeah. Tr uh, Megatron turns into a gun, and then Optimus takes Megatron, he puts him into his mouth, and he blows his fucking head off. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> that is the logical conclusion of the Michael Bay. That's how you open the movie. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I can't. That's that's really. <laughs> I'm sorry. Terrible. That's really dark. But that's where those movies are headed. Yeah. All right. So this comic we're supposed to talk so, about. So, uh, tr New Avengers Transformers presupposes the idea that Cybertron exists in space, and the and, and the, the superheroes are completely unaware of the first two arcs that were happening in the IDW uh, Transformers comic that were happening on Earth. Right. Because the Transformers have been operating in that comic uh, kind of in secret, 
And when they need to interact with humans, like, they transform into a car, and then they can holographically project, like, a human who, like, interacts with people for them. Oh. So, that's, that's cool. It's, it's yeah. understandable, mm -hmm. I guess, but yeah. it's a little weird. But it's it's also helpful that like, there's... With, with, with the Transformers and the New Avengers, you could literally easily just say, like, oh, a rift opened and the Transformers yeah. are here. You know, like, no, they're here. No, they've the always been here. And, the, and, and Robots in of, disguise. Yeah. yeah. And that's they, the whole point. There's a line in that. They of say course. that, yeah. of course. Because he says, like, we've been operating in secret. And they're like, oh, robots in disguise. And then, All right. And then, you know. That's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Because the rift thing, I get it. It's cleaner, but it's also a cop out. It is a cop. This is like we're trying to figure out how to like get them in there. Right, but then they never refer to it again, and they never You're do right. a sequel to this. Sure. Which is really too bad because then they could have had like another opportunity to maybe get it right. Mm. But I don't know anybody who loves this story. I always felt really bad that you I never will, knew the, the this episode tagline was robots in disguise. Mm -hmm. I thought it was robots in the skies. Yes, because like the <laughs> star scream and the plane. Because a few of them can fly. Are airborne. Well, and they came from space. You're not the only oh. one who thought that. Like, I remember debating with other kids about that. <laughs> yeah. And being like, it's disguise. It says it on the package. Yeah, no, but, but I it wasn't sounds buying like the... the sky. Right, but it's not, though. I Just wasn't it sounds like it doesn't buying the it toys. Is. I was watching the show. That's true. And it's robots in the skies. Yeah, but it's not the sky. <laughs> Except not, though. It's disguise. It's <laughs> really funny. This episode's <laughs> off the rails. Bonkers. I we assume even one of those one planes page. is Starscream, by the way. It's not. Spoilers, it's not. Because <laughs> in the first arc of the IDW Star, uh, Transformers book, Starscream dies. Oh, shit. But Starscream's great. I know. And I'm sure so he comes back. It's, it's a whole... Listen, there's a rich, long-standing, like, 11-year history. They just recently decided to reboot the Transformers comic book universe oh. after, like, 12 years of continuity. Did wow. they have a crisis? You know, I think they're headed towards one. It's gotten so bonkers, Megatron joins the Autobots. That's how nuts it gets. Whoa. Yeah. You and mean like Magneto joins the X-Men? Yeah. yeah. That cool. But cooler, because it's Megatron. So, the story opens with the new Avengers sneaking into Latveria, which, as we all know, is the Eastern European country that uh, Doctor Doom runs. And right. the reason why they're doing that is because they are honing in on, like, an energy signature that they've discovered. Mm -hmm. And like it's so funny. they invade his country because they're like, hey, I want to know what that thing is. Well, I mean, no, Doctor Doom's a bad guy. Okay, so they have so, no problem just violating sovereign borders. Absolutely, no. now, of course not. Okay, uh, here's a few things that Stuart Moore gets wrong right off the bat because this takes place within the first two arcs of New Avengers. Mm -hmm. Doctor Doom's dead. Uh, <laughs> well, it doesn't mean Oops. that Latveria ceases to exist. No, in fact, Bendis wrote a story called Secret War, which took place right before New Avengers, in which Lucia von Bardas takes over. Latveria ah. from Doctor Doom and then Nick Fury launches a secret war against them. We did that book. Yeah, we did do that book a long but time ago. But Nick Fury yeah. launches a secret war with these most of these characters to invade Latveria so it's very similar to this only they, they try to dethrone her and they assassinate her and then she comes back and she's got robot parts and stuff. It's not connected to Transformers in any way but it'd it's still kind of amazing. Yeah, it'd be a fun story but no, yeah, that she survived because she like met up with Megatron he's like, I'll help you out but like, no. I have little bugs crawling all over exactly. me. Exactly, I have nanobots. But no, so uh, but so let's do it again. But this time, Doctor Doom, because I want to use Doctor Doom and I don't read comics. So here you go. Oh, hey, this is so a crossover. All that. So, well, <laughs> and if it was just like it's it's it just drop the new just Avengers yep. Transformers, and it takes place whenever the hell you want. Right. But instead, they're like, no, it takes place between this story and the story, and this story and the story. Well, this is what the team we have. Yeah. Like, why would we not have this amazing killer team? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, that's a good question. Because that's what happens in the story. Because New Avengers. The Avengers are a stale franchise at this point. Or at mm. least everyone believes so. Bendis kills half of them. So the new team is Cap and Iron Man and Wolverine and Luke Cage and Spider-Man. And Spider-Woman. Who doesn't appear in this book. Hm? What? Yeah, just... So... <laughs> the New Avengers, such that they are... Oh. Sneak into Latveria. Oh, I, I no. I totally get why. It's because there's no female Autobot. Yeah, there, I mean, there are female Autobots, but... Who would she fight? Right. <laughs> There's no female Decepticon. Right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and as we all know, women can't fight men, because then you might see a man punch a woman, and that's totally inappropriate. Right, or get beat by a woman. And <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> so they happen upon this, like, weird... It's a Cybertronian Citadel. It's made of... You know, the, the idea is that the Decepticons are looking to steal Energon. Mm -hmm. It's what they do. They go across the galaxy. They siphon Energon from planets. 
and then eat it or whatever. I don't know what they do with energon. But uh, uh, they, they throw it on more. a bed and they lay in it and they roll <laughs> around. Yeah, they make little Decepticons. Right. <laughs> It's an aphrodisiac. So <laughs> the New Avengers discover it, and they're like, okay. So they call Maria Hill, who is at least one piece of continuity that takes place in the story. Hmm. And they're like, so what What the hell is this? Like, I'm looking at a big crazy dome made of, like, robot, like, living robot technology. I, this is this looks beyond Doctor Doom. Hmm. And then uh, a She's strange... like, I don't know. You're there. Right. She's like, Why I don't know. I it's, just know a crazy, it's just a crazy energy signature. Go check it out. So what happens is the idea here is that for some reason... Latveria and their neighboring country of Sincaria, which is usually run by Silver Sable, uh, are going to go to war with mm. each other. Okay. And, uh, you know, peace negotiations have broken down, and they're all threatening nuclear action. It could cause World War III. The, 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 the crux of the story is the new Avengers are trying to keep Sincaria and Latveria from, like, launching nuclear weapons at each other and starting World War III. Okay. That's the idea. And the reason why they're doing that is because there seems to be like some kind of energy source that's happening in Latveria, and it looks like Doctor Doom's up to some shenanigans. And uh, there's also like unregistered planes that are flying around, which are obviously mm. Decepticons. Spoilers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know. Yeah. I would believe that if there was a weird energy signature in Latveria, it's Doctor Doom fucking Right, right. right. He, yeah, he's he's a fair. magic user. Why yeah. wouldn't it be Doctor Doom? Yeah. Oh, living robots. Sure. Doctor Doom, it's not just like... happens to be in your country, Doctor Doom. You know, nothing to do with it. Right. It's just a coincidence. And, and let's, let's not forget the fact that Doctor Doom has, like, sentient robots. Right. Called Doombots. Yeah. That he's had literally pretty much since his inception. So, yeah. the idea... Well, well anyway. Oh, so, you made uh, a sentient a army concern. of robots. Yeah. Is Silver Sable in this book? She appears on a monitor. All right. That's cool. Yeah. Just so, the ones, though. For, for no reason... Wolverine and Captain America are really butting heads with each other. You know, Cap's like, we gotta strategize. And Wolverine's like, I've got a plan and I'm gonna use my adamantium claws to cut through walls and go in there and kill people. And Cap's like, hey there, soldier, you better watch it. And everyone's like really, really like roided up for some reason. Yeah. Everyone's really aggro for no reason. Because <laughs> uh, they know they shouldn't be in the story. Yeah, well, they're all like annoyed they're shoehorned into this crappy idea. Mm. But, so th th but no, there's a, there's a plot reason why they're, ups they're, they're so extreme. Oh. There's and some it, kind of energy field that it chances aggression. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. So right. as the new Avengers break into the Citadel and they're being they're being scanned by Decepticons. Mm. And the Decepticons are like checking out their biometrics and looking yeah. at their genetic structures and their blood streams. And they're like, okay, and eh, like and they're basically giving you kind of like a rundown of who everybody is. Doctor you know, uh, Steve Rogers, Luke Cage, Wolverine. Then they and see for all the Transformers comic book readers who are like, Who are these guys? Right. <laughs> Eventually, the scanners land on Spider-Man, and like, ah, that one's perfect. And what? so they zap Spider-Man, and then a rad Lamborghini or whatever like hits him, and then drives away with him. Spider-Man just got car napped. Yeah. And so the Wolverine is really, really upset by this. Yeah. It's kind of uncharacteristic, but whatever. <laughs> but Wolverine's like really, really hit by this, and he's like, oh, we gotta go get him. And they're like, oh, we, we gotta, we gotta regroup. And then you see this like energy field that's like really hitting them, and then like the the, the hole that they made gets sealed up by by electricity, mm. and they can't get through. And Cap is like, you, you the reality is what happened is uh, we screwed up because Luke Cage and Wolverine are amateurs. What? <laughs> and you're not wow. really fit to be Avengers. And it's so you're like, off the team. No, he doesn't. It's not quite that humiliating. It's actually more humiliating. <laughs> because what happens is instead of being like, you're bench, get out of here. He calls up two other Avengers who used to be Avengers who aren't welcome on the new Avengers just to pitch hit for them. What? Wow. Okay. So he calls up Ms. Marvel, now Captain Marvel, and Falcon. And he's like, ha, there. Now I have two people I can rely on instead of these idiots. Now, why were they not welcome at the time on the Avengers? Because they were not popular. <laughs> Bendis did not <laughs> welcome them. I on thought the you team. meant for story reasons. No, they there's were a, like at, on the outs. With no, there's there. a great moment in House of M where you know it's Avengers and X Men. They all got to team up, so they call they all, everybody. And there's a great moment where I think Falcon and Ms. Marvel at the door of Stark Tower, aka Avengers Tower, and they're like, "What do you think he wanted?" And uh, Carol says, maybe they invited us to not be on the Avengers. And you're like, that's fair. That's a fair thing to say. Because yeah. you weren't invited. Right. So, what do they do when they're not on the Avengers? I guess they just... They not, their own books. Some of them do. Maybe. Falcon and Ms. Marvel did not at the time. Ms. Marvel did eventually get her own book. But after House of M, and it didn't do very well. But most of the time, they just kind of languish in obscurity or irrelevancy until someone decides to do something with them. Yeah, but I mean, in the storyline... In the story, they're just kind of like either being retired, because it was after New uh, uh, oh, Avengers yeah. Assembled. 
So he's got like a regular job? Yeah. No, I'm just living off of my previous uh, exploits. Like the spoils of my heroism. Yeah. You know, like, people buy me meals and stuff for free. I don't really have any. Hey, chances. you're you're Miss Marvel. I am. Yeah. I'd like to buy you dinner. Okay. Thank God. Good thing I walked into those five guys. <laughs> so. And uh, my friend Falcon's coming along. Oh uh, well, he's gonna have to pick up the tab himself because I don't know who Falcon is. Anyway, so the <laughs> New Avengers are bickering amongst themselves because of the aggression wave sure. from the whatever the hell. No, Captain America's upset because his cap is ruined and his hair is poking yeah, out. It's all, yeah, it's he, all gross. It, it, it did get wrecked. So, meanwhile, Optimus Prime and the Autobots are monitoring the situation. They're like, oh, the superheroes are getting upset. And, uh, like, I can tell it's because of Megatron. You know, because uh. Simkari and the Liberians are also getting aggression. Right. Because... We're huge fans of the Avengers, and we know they'd never act that way. No, they, 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 it's weird that they're here, and they've always been here, but they don't really know them, and they've never met them before, even though this is a great opportunity for us to refer to the 80s era of Transformers, but they don't, uh, yeah. because it's an IDW era now. And but they do know that the Avengers are acting out of character. Yeah, well, they do, because eventually the Avengers show up and attack them. Well, not oh. only that, but also the nice. Avengers are in the news. The Autobots are not. No, the, the Autobots are operating in disguise. But uh, the weird thing is that the Autobots are watching this happen. Yeah. Like, they have installations... Yeah, they have, like, a, yeah, they to, have a base. ...to spy on exactly what's happening with Megatron and, and Leopard. Oh, yeah, with the close-ups and angles and everything. Yeah. Inside, especially. Yeah, they mm -hmm. hacked into the ship or whatever. Right, or, or they have nano thing. cameras that are flying around. Either way... The idea here is uh, Spider-Man has been kidnapped by Megatron. He's hooked up to a table, and they're going to use his unique blood to synthesize a special form of Energon that will supercharge them and make them more powerful. Oh. So cool. They're going to take the uh, the old blood and make it a new synthetic blood, much like you have conventional oil and synthetic oil. I suppose. They're just going to use Spider-Man's blood and just turn it into Energon. That's weird. I don't know how many processes there are. They don't really get into the nitty-gritty about that. Is all Energon made from, like, blood? I don't think so. Tissue? No, Energon is usually naturally occurring. Yeah. This is like a hybrid Energon they're trying to make yes. or Yes, yeah, they're making, like, a synthetic Energon. Much like Spider-Man is, like, a hybrid of a spider and a man. Yeah. Something. They choose Spider-Man because they don't know what to do with him in the story. Yeah. And they also want yeah, to they put could take Spider -Man everybody's blood could cover. be weird. You know? well, and, like, they, and indeed they are, because they scan, like, Wolverine, like, oh, we're almost there. You mean blood that can heal itself? Right. Wolverine is the perfect one. Yeah, Wolverine makes a lot of Also because he's literally genetically altered. He's a mutant. Yeah. Spider-Man is just a guy who got wrecked by something else. By yeah. an external ah, force. But maybe there's radiation inside Spider-Man. Maybe want that's radiation. it. That's what I, I was like, oh, okay, it's the, it's the radiation. That's the only X Factor. Yeah. Not to make a reference to X-Men or anything. But it's the only X Factor that that differentiates Spider-Man from the other teammates is that his blood is irradiated. Yeah. They don't make any reference to the radiation whatsoever. Is Steve Rogers technically irradiated? Because the super soldier no. serum... No, like, that's, that's he not is, radiation. No, that's not radiation. He used uh, like Vita serum. rays. Oh, there you go. Which is a, a form of solar radiation, but it's a different kind of radiation. With vitamins? Well, it's not like in no. him, right? He doesn't have like radiation. He doesn't have vita rays like circulated in his body. No, they used vita changed. rays in, in conjunction with the, with the super soldier serum. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's right, the serum as well. Yeah. The serum's it's the very real complicated. Thing. Yeah. You'd think it's very uh, evergreen and simple, but it's actually not. So, anyway, Falcon and Ms. Marvel show up and they're like, what's the call, Cap? And Cap's like, okay, well, let's, let's not talk in front of the, the help here. Let's, let's get let's the get rookies. To work. And uh, so they're, they're just kind of like, they're like, okay, well, we got to break into the installation. We got to kick ass. We don't really know anything else besides the fact that Spider Man's missing. And Wolverine's like, man, we got to get Spider Man. Like, he's, he's the key to all of this. <laughs> And uh, sure. so they're, they, they start, like, fighting, and then Cap, like, hits Wolverine in the head with his shield. So the Autobots show up, and they're like, Behold, here we are. Check out all the fun Autobots we get to hang out with, yeah. like, like Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Jazz, Prowl, and Ratchet. By the way, uh, note for the book, uh, Bumblebee is in his G1 form and not in the at-current-time IDW Bumblebee form. The artist didn't care and didn't notice. So, I like so him artist, better when he was a bug. Yeah, I like the one that has I have an action figure of. So the people who wrote this book or did this book, artists they and did writers, no research. They didn't care about what was going on in the Avengers or what was going on in Transformers. No, but they cared enough to go. Starscream's dead, right. but I still want to use him. So let's create a new character that acts and looks just like Starscream, which says to me. 
that they wrote and drew Starscream. Right. And then they were like, you can't use Starscream, he's dead. And they were like, oh, well then let's just change some colors and the text a little bit. So Captain America's like, look, giant robots, uh, Avengers, kill them all. Which I mean, Captain America would absolutely say. Oh, yeah. A, a car just stole Spider-Man, and now cars are talking to them. That's, That's true. That's not that far-fetched. It is a crossover, and so our two have heroes to have to fight. Yep. And so here we go. All right. How's it go? It goes pretty interestingly. I mean, it's a fun fight. Cool. You know, they fight. Uh, Optimus Prime barks orders to his Autobots, and he says something like, you know, remember, we're dealing with humans, so don't kill them unless we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine's like, but I have adamantium claws, so I'm gonna kill all of you. Yeah. And then Doctor Doom shows up and fries Wolverine with his power gauntlet. Oh. Do you remember that I could just take down uh, Sentinels single-handedly? Guess what I'm gonna do to you. Exactly. And that would have been cool. Hey, Sentinels, that would have been neat. Oh yeah. They're taken over by uh, by by uh, Megatron. Nope. Nah. So Doctor Doom shows up and he's like, "You're welcome. I knocked out Wolverine. Now everyone can talk because you're you invaded my country. You're not supposed to be here." Here's the thing. I want you to discuss all of this before I murder you all mm -hmm. for invading my country. <laughs> right. No, he's trying to get their help, right? Because yeah, he man. didn't ask for this evil Decepticon thing to be yeah, here. Yeah, so, well, it's... it's. Oh, so it's a whole Dr. Thing. Doom and, have, and uh, Megatron are having a dick measuring contest of, like, who's going to take over the world yeah, and gets, won't be more evil. There's a connection. So then Ratchet uses a behavior inhibitor disc that he invents during the fight or right before the fight, and he puts it on Captain America, who's, like who chills out a little bit, and he's like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. Like, everybody chill out. And Ms. Marvel's like, no, I'm not gonna chill out! Because I'm a loose cannon, and I, uh, you need a character that's gonna lose their crap! And I know Wolverine would have been that character, but we just knocked him out, so let's have it be me! And so everyone's like, Jesus Christ, Carol, like, chill out for two seconds. And so she won't, and, ever, and she just keeps freaking out, and Doctor Doom, like, zaps her, and they're like, okay, well, now we can all talk. Because the only <laughs> woman on the team is now knocked out. <laughs> And you're like, what the hell is That's happening? That's weird. Don't do that. So then, uh, you know, Optimus is like, okay, well, now that you're all paying attention, like, uh, Megatron. Now that the irrational woman has been taken care of. <laughs> Everyone can, nagging us. Cooler heads can prevail. <laughs> so, uh, but she also, like, refuses to use the inhibitor disc because she's like, I've been mind control before and I won't be caught uh, into it. And you're like, okay, I, I, get, I, mean, I get the character motivation, but at the same time, like, Making the only woman on the team hysterical is kind of a cheat, but whatever. Let's move on. Yeah. So uh, well, maybe you could like explain what's happening. Right. Like, no, the problem is like the inhibitor disc is actually like fixing you. Someone else is. Well, and they see you. like, look, all your teammates are wearing them, and they're all not freaking out like you are. Right. Here's the thing. I would explain it, but I I really just want you to wear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You why don't you just trust me? That you're freaking out uh, because of a thing. Yeah, trust the big robot invader for yeah. space. It doesn't really matter what it is or how it works. Just, yeah. you know. So, uh, this is also the fun part of the story for us here on the couch. Because it makes reference to a book we did on a previous episode of Back Issues. Ah. Uh, so, Dr. Doom is like, yeah, so here's the, here, here's the, the rundown about the aggression wave that's hitting everybody. It's not just affecting you, it's affecting everybody in my country, everybody in Simcaria, and it's, it could take over everybody. Uh, the, uh, there, there's this rogue faction of uh, living robots that took control of and built a synthetic version of a, a prism that I built in a story called Emperor Doom. No. Uh, in Emperor Doom, uh, Dr. Doom builds a big prism that is based off of the physiology of the Purple Man, which he then sh puts Purple Man inside of and then uses to take over the world and yep. control the wills of men. Uh, so, I guess Megatron steals that, like, blueprint technology that's within Doctor Doom's information, and so they build their own version of it, which, instead of taking over everybody, just makes them all aggro. Because the idea here is that, like, the Decepticons' plot is or their MO, if you will, is that they go, to con they, go, they, go, they go to different planets, they use an aggression wave to make the populace all murder each other, and then now they're all dead, the Decepticons just walk in and take all the, all the, all the energy on. Why go to war if we can make them war amongst themselves? Exactly. Well, why do they need to be like armed with gigantic like weapons and stuff? Well, because they, they might be each Autobots. Other. Yeah. Because oh. <laughs> of the war on Cybertron, you see. Okay. Also, they're all about modding. Yeah. So they just think it looks cool. Mm -hmm. Their real strategy does not involve fighting the people on the planet oh, in any no. way, shape, or form. Exactly. No, no. They're really just kind of lazy. Right. Look, <laughs> it's I, easier if they just kill each other. I don't yeah. turn into I mean, a I, gun I because them. I want to shoot people. I turn into a gun because it's awesome. Yeah, because I look cool. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. You, you yeah. do look cool. I'll grant you that, Megatron. So 
Cap's like, okay, well, uh, so we go in there, we break the cube, and then we, uh, and then we go home. That sounds great to me. Uh, you got any more of those inhibitor discs? And Carol's like, ah! <laughs> They're like, all right, just put this on you. And they, they put it again. They, so they, they force her to they wear for, it. They, they force her to wear it. In fact, why don't you wear, like, five of them? You could need them. So they call, uh, they call Iron Man, and why Iron Man's Iron Man like... not Iron Man there for the beginning? I don't know. Because oh. they need to call him in this scene. So oh. then Iron Man shows up. <laughs> And he's like, hey, uh, you know, actually, I've been, like, monitoring the, the world over the last couple of years, and I always suspected that there might be living robots in disguise among us. Oh. And you're like, thanks for that throwaway line, Iron Man. Well, I didn't want to sound like a crazy, like, conspiracy theorist, but, right, uh, but you know, I did think the whole time. I, was, I knew about this the whole time, actually. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. If I can make robots... Someone else has to be able to make robots, right? Well, except these are robots that were, like, born. They yeah, these are naturally existing robots. Or yeah. something? Yeah. But <laughs> so, yeah, I, I totally knew about it. I was not caught off guard at all. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay no, I seriously, know. I did, though. No, I'm totally prepared. Yep. So then he shows up. So then we cut to the inside of the Citadel where Megatron is using the Spider-Man blood to infuse his fellow Decepticons with this yeah. new type of Energon. Are they going to get spider powers? No. Oh. Nope, they just get more powerful. So Runamuck is the first one to receive the augmentation. Right. He's like, oh man, I feel super powerful. And Megatron's like, yes, who's next? And then Starscream, I mean Ramjet, is like, me! <laughs> <laughs> and Megatron's like, mm, I think not, not Starscream. Because you're always plotting to destroy me, even though <laughs> you've like been Star invented Scream. for this story. <laughs> So, so not Starscream, a.k.a. Ramjet, <laughs> is like, why don't you stay here and guard the base while I augment the other Decepticons? But that's Bumblebee's job! <laughs> Bumblebee's not on this team, you idiot. But it's still always his job. <laughs> so then they leave, uh, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Spider-Man then, like, chats with Megatron for a little while. and Anyway, so then we I'm meet... I'm sure the... Spider-Man is joking and sarcastic yeah, at A little him. bit. Yeah. You know, so then we meet the Decepticons. Dome. Doesn't say it. Why don't you... Nope, nope. No. He more says, like, yeah, it, it's worse. You know, he yeah. says something... He says, like, I'm going to ravage your fuse box, which sounds vaguely sexual. <laughs> so Only because it uses the word ravage. And box. <laughs> eh. <laughs> if it was, like... I'm gonna plug up your tailpipe. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's more. That's more I like, overt. I like your Sal's, engine won't be able to run like if Sal's it can't have exhaust coming out. Box. Yeah, because it's the key to everything. You know. Anyway, so, like, so behold. I'm gonna overload your fuse box. How about that? I'm gonna unlock your fuse box. Eh, that sounds like an invitation. Like that sounds like a willing. Anyway, I'm the key master. Right, and you're the gatekeeper. So Megatron uh, rolls out with his Decepticons, which is runabout. Wait, Megatron also makes himself superpowered, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. He does that. At the the second it was, he wasn't the second one. I was very confused. I'll test this on someone else. Yeah. Well, well once it works, he's got to test me. on like five me. people. Yeah, he just sure. he knows it's gonna work, so he tries on everybody. He only has a small team. He's got Skywarp and Runamuck and Runabout and Thundercracker and Blitzwing. These are names of the Decepticons. <laughs> I mean, Blitzwing makes sense because it's like Blitzkrieg and then you get Germans and you're like, oh yeah, they're evil. Yeah, right, you can but, fly, but they can so also fly, so wing. So anyway, uh... I'm not, I'm kidding, not all Germans are evil. No. Oh, no, I thought you thought that. I just... Yeah. <laughs> no, I was telling the audience. Right, no, I gotcha. So, uh, the Avengers and the Autobots, like, shoot at the Citadel and it doesn't work and Doom's like, this isn't working, I'm leaving. What? what? Yeah, that's exactly what their reaction is. Too. They're like, I came here to explain what's happening. And and, and, and you guys are you guys are totally lame. And now I'm done. He 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 offers some vague explanation about where he's going. He says something like, "I'm going to achieve a diplomatic solution with the neighboring country. Like, I'll go to the UN and tell them the here's the thing. We're doing fine. I just came out here so you guys would like stop fighting on my lawn. Right. But okay. now that you're proceeding to fight on my lawn, I'm just going to go. You know, I'm just going to go home. I'm going to nuke this entire place. <laughs> with like your a, country! With a safe nuke. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Why is Wolverine not able to cut through the outside uh, of Because building? there's like an energy thing around oh, as well. It's, okay. it's like you can't cut All right. electricity. Oh, okay. So then, uh, right when they can't get in, the Decepticons open the door and a bunch of Decepticons come out. And attack them. And attack them. So that was pointless. Yeah. I mean, yes, you now have like more enhanced energon so maybe you could finally defeat the autobots mm -hmm. yeah but they can't get in 
Maybe just keep him out for a while. Well, yeah, just leave it there. Yeah, yeah just continue with back. your plan of having everyone attack and kill mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Well, no, there's no. the Autobots and the Transformers. That would be cowardly, and, and, Sal. I'm going to I'm gonna attack them head on. Oh, okay. I'm not going to sneak attack them. No, not like Decepticons would. Maybe they're afraid eventually they'd find a way in. So they're like, i got to attack them now. Right. Ironically, uh, they, 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 the Decepticons leave the Citadel and then close the door behind them. And then a couple of the new Avengers notice that the energy signature around the area they left is a little weaker than the other area around the Citadel. It's like a door. Yeah, so they just, they just, and then they just go through it. Like, there's no explanation about like, oh, maybe if I hack into it, or maybe if I do this, that, and the other thing. No, but it's like, a little weaker. It's a little weaker, so we just go through. <laughs> so we just cut to the chase. What? <laughs> so they do. All right. So, so then the, the, the Iron Man shows up in a big Transformers looking Iron Man suit. But it really just looks like a big Iron it's Man suit. It's just a big Iron Man suit. And in fact, it's the, big art, the art is so bad that forced perspective indicates that either he's really big or he's just in the foreground. It's kind of hard to tell. But Iron Man <laughs> shows up. That is really funny if that's the case where, like, no, he's not big. they're all just far away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm real close. Right, exactly. But I'm talking to the audience. Now, Iron Man shows up and he's like, I'll, I'll take care of this because I'm the closest thing to a Transformer we can have in this story and I really only spent about two or three hours coming up with this idea. So, I mean, that's basically what, the, yeah. you, you, like, you have this, you have this IP. You go to the IDW, I want to do Transformers. At least come to them with an idea. No, just, no. just I want to use our flagship title and, the, uh, and your flagship title and put them together. Uh, come up with something. What? Now. I, thought, I thought you wanted to come up with something. Nope, I want it to do it. I want to make the money off it. And I'll pay yeah. you a little bit of it if you come up with something. Yeah, just, I mean, you must have And I need a script, anything. like, tomorrow. Here's the yeah. thing. You guys are lame. So, like, you've always wanted to do an Avengers, like, Transformers crossover. Yeah. I know you got the stories. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm Marvel. fucking nerds. Right. Like, just, whatever. Just, come on. Just go on the internet and pull down one of the one one fan fics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a fanfic would have been better than this. So, Iron Man is just shooting at Decepticons. But what's funny is, like, his armor keeps telling him, like, his his energy is depleting, you know, like he's, he fires and it's like 87% and he shoots another Decepticon and it's like 62%. He's like, oh man, like making my armor this big is using up a lot of energy. I wish I had an Energon No, nope, he doesn't use Energon. <laughs> Fuck. I know. Again, just, just spitballing would have come up yeah. with a better concept. But so, uh, so they, 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 you know, they have a big fight. And uh, and Wolverine like just tears ass through the Decepticons, right? No, because they're like made of tougher stuff or something. Again, an adamantium Decepticon, for example. Yeah. Wouldn't that be neat? Hey, that would be what cool. if the Decepticons invaded Wakanda to get vibranium to make like vibranium energon or something? Yeah. Nope. So uh, uh, so th literally the only reason they did the Spider Man thing, well, well, aside from you mentioning they didn't know what to do with Spider Man, mm -hmm. is that they needed it to be plausible that the Decepticons could fight. The combined forces of the trans of the Autobots and, and the, Avengers. the Avengers, like, and have a chance. Yeah, because if it was just the Avengers plus Autobots, well, they would easily overwhelm the Decepticons Naturally. because they're equally matched normally. Right. Yeah. If you thought about it for a few seconds, yeah. that would exactly be the. So reason. they'd be like, oh, just make them, uh, just make them. Uh, they're extra strong. Right. They got a thing that makes they them steal stronger. one member of the Avengers. Yeah. Which makes all of them more strong than the combined might of the Avengers and the Autobots. Yeah. Because of magic in his blood. Uh, yeah. it's, it's quantum energy now. <laughs> there you go. So. It's nanites or some shit. Mm -hmm. It's one of those words that yeah. means magic. It's electro venom. Is that Starscream slash Spider Man? Ramjet? Yeah. He, he, he's, you know, kicking ass. It looks cool. Well, Starscream slash Ramjet leaves. Or maybe it's. Uh, Sky something? It's Sky, Sky Wing? Or? Bl Blitz Wing. Blitz, Blitz Wing. Wing. It could be Blitz Wing. Because I think. No, because uh, cause Ramjet has to guard the base. Ah. But when Blitz Wing leaves. Then Luke Cage and Ratchet and another and Prowl go in. And the reason why Prowl comes is because Prowl's like, Ratchet, you're kind of like weak for the humans. You kind of always feel bad for them. Like, our job is to break in and beat the Decepticreeps, not to like save anybody. Mm -hmm. So my job is to keep you on task. Not only that, but don't mm -hmm. you think these superheroes could maybe protect themselves well spider-man can't because he's obviously yeah. been kidnapped and is under you know i see so the conflict is that ratchet wants to go save spider-man and and prowl prowl's like no we have a mission well ratchet and luke cage team up and uh -huh. luke cage is kind of like leading 
wrench yeah. it. But okay. anyway, so... Oh, and he has to talk to the holographic projection instead of the car. Yes, because otherwise that would be stupid looking. <laughs> I'm not having Luke Cage talk to a car, Sal. Even though he literally does. So, Luke Cage I'm and... I'm sorry, could you make some kind of project... I feel like I'm an idiot. Yeah, yes. I, I'm talking to the hood of a car. What, where where do I look? Do I look at your sense. headlights? Do I look at the steering wheel? Right? Very well, I will make you more comfortable here. I've changed my entire physiology <laughs> just so you can feel more comfortable slightly. <laughs> Oh, thank and by God. The way, the thank you. I love the, I hel appreciate the holographic technology is like so crappy. Like It's always blipping and glitching. And you're yeah. like, how could this fool anybody? Yeah, this isn't better. This is no, worse. Just, we need to visually indicate <laughs> that it's a hologram. Otherwise, people could be confused by why they're trying to Right. <laughs> yep. Hi, I'm totally normal. <laughs> ah, the electrician's here. Yeah, Perfect. you've totally infiltrated I, me. Well, I'm feeling much more comfortable now. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for not wearing, like, a, a skin of my people and, like, just walking around like a creepy puppet. <laughs> Ratchet and Luke find Megatron, who's siphoning power from Spider-Man. Megatron knocks the crap out of Ratchet and Luke Cage. And then uh, Ramjet meets up with Prowl, and he's like, Megatron sucks, man. He won't give me his superpowers and stuff. I had crap. to guard the base. Yeah. And uh, so Ramjet is guarding the cube. Prowl is like, all right, I've got gotcha. you. He's just guarding the thing that's giving them energy? No, it's the... the it's the, the thing that makes people angry. The aggro cube. Oh, the aggro cube. The okay. Because I was going to say, like, uh, I would just happen. Not the aggro oh, crag. Yeah. Right, which you can scale well, in guts. You only get a piece of the aggro crag. Right, right, right. Prowl runs into Ramjet, and he's like, step away from the cube, you know, the, the right. aggro cube. Or I'll kill you. Or I'll kill you. And then Ramjet's like, sure thing. And then Dr. Doom shows up and blasts uh, Prowl. Oh, just Prowl. Yeah, because Dr. Like, Doom was working, working with, with Megatron. The, the whole yeah, time. of course. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. So, that was bad the whole time. Yeah. I want him to be bad the whole time. Yeah, at the I know, same time, I, know. I would rather have him just take over and be like, no. Right. I'm not teaming up with you. You invaded my country. Exactly. No, that'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be cool if you have like a three way fight. Like you had Doom and his forces, the new Avengers and the Autobots, and the Decepticons, and this big fight. Nope. No. So, did, uh, did he invite them in? No, I think it's more like they showed cool. up and then he's like, well, well I'll, I'll turn just... it to my advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, Iron Man is you know, kicking ass, but he's losing power, and so Mega. Or, right. so, so Optimus Prime is like, so it looks like you could use a recharge, and so Optimus. Would you like to get jumped? Yeah. So then Optimus sticks his port into Iron Man's socket, <laughs> and charges Iron Man up, and so Iron uh -huh. Man is like supercharged. So Optimus is just a giant battery. portable battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or For a the, blood donor. Yeah, or, a blood donor. Yeah. So. <laughs> Now Iron Man's armor is at 157% and an overload is imminent unless he does something, which he does immediately. It's just like, if there's like tension that it's almost like the letterer invented to make yeah. the story have more, like, <laughs> more stakes. Iron Man, you have to dump that excess energy. Okay. Press this button that dumps excess energy. Yeah, we don't even see that. That's close. Just, like, quick, computer, do that. Okay, I did. All right, great. Wait, that's <laughs> it? Yeah. That's, that's, I thought that's like Star Trek. I thought he did yeah. something. <laughs> Oh, an overload is going to be imminent unless you get rid of your excess energy by he get blasting of... it out at the yeah. Decepticon. Yeah, why does he do that? No, it's more like, you better disengage the couplings or else, you know, you're going to blow up. And he's like, okay. So he does. But we don't see that because it doesn't matter. You also better eat your lunch. Otherwise, you'll be hungry. <laughs> okay, I did already. <laughs> wow, so much tension. That. So much drama. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh... So then Megatron, like, projects a big, cool visual of himself hanging with Doom and having defeated Spider-Man and Luke Cage. And they're like, oh man, Dr. Doom was working with the Decepticons the whole time. What? Who would have thought that? <laughs> All right. And then, uh, so... So they're like, oh, we gotta get in there so and stop like, Doom. Yep, so they're like, we gotta go in there and stop Doom. And so uh, Ramjet tells Megatron, like, they're attacking. And then Megatron's like, hey, Doom, you said that, like, if we defeated them and we gave them ultimatums or whatnot, that they would knock it off. But they didn't, so I'll betray you. So Megatron, like, zaps Doctor Doom. <laughs> and then just, like... And then says one of the worst lines in the book. He says, There's an old Cybertronian proverb, If you truly wish organic beings to be battered into thin paste, you must do it yourself. What? Yeah, it's like, uh, you want something done right, you right. do it yourself. But... Because Doom failed to defeat the Avengers. But, yes. but we have to... With, like, splatter tiny tactics. humans. Right. Yeah. So then... Uh, Megatron just opens the door and he's like, I'm totally supercharged, so prepare to get your asses whooped. Yep. 
Yep. And you're like, oh my god. Yeah, but oh, so should no. Iron Man be. This would be the moment where he's like, yeah, 150 yeah. percent. Well, I'm supercharged. Yeah. Wham! And that's exactly what it. Well, Iron Man doesn't like open his uni beam power and just blast Megatron into next Tuesday. He's got to punch him. Yeah. Because we've got a Pacific Rim. This bitch. He's got to punch him in the face. Look, I don't want giant robots to shoot lasers at each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I want lame. them to fight. Well, sometimes yes. they can shoot lasers, but sometimes they have to punch each other. Yeah. I gotta have a mix of exactly. Combat, you want to vary it up. It doesn't you know? make any sense to get in close <laughs> if you have beams. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. We always have that fight in Power Rangers where the <laughs> Megazords <laughs> finally create yeah. the the. I think their Zords. Their Zords. They create Megazord. Megazord. Yeah, I knew you were gonna have a problem as soon as you started with Megazord. Megazord I'm like, oh like, no, you can't, he's, he's gonna... you're already at ten. <laughs> no, because then you can also have the Dragon Zord come in and yeah. then they combine. No, I'm, but like, you have Megazord. And he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight you for a while. Yep. Then and I then lose. Eventually, I will either get the sword or I'll yeah. get some giant thing and I will just blast you into yeah. oblivion. It's either a sword yeah. or the gun. Oh, yep. guess what? I should have just started with the gun, but I didn't. <laughs> yep. well, we they, had to fight first. Well, every I guess time I just they, started my strongest form, and well, then it would take a No, every episode of Power Rangers is the same. You know, they got to fight the putties, and they fight the main bad guy, then the main bad guy gets big, then they fight him with their zords, the zords aren't enough, then they put the zords together, then they fight the, then they fight the megazord, and then they win. And like, usually there's what? something specific about the bad guy yep. where, like, we have to do something new to defeat him now. But they always yeah. do the same thing to beat him at the end anyway. Why don't you just always summon the megazord? Especially just, when they're tiny. Start with the Megazord. Start with the Megazord. That's not thing. And then just like, step fair. on it. There doesn't appear to be any cost. Like it's not like, well, we don't want to call the Megazord because like it's super expensive and use that. Energy. No, there's no penalty. No, to we can using only do the it a no, it's or just, to forming you're Megazord. Just slaves to like habit. You can just do it whenever you want. Mm-hmm. Just start with the Megazord. Just start with the Megazord. I have an idea. Let's go to Rita Repulses and just step on her. Yeah. Hey, that thing is probably spacefaring. Just fly to the moon. I think it's the moon. Is it the moon? Yeah, the moon. it is the moon. Wherever I think it's the, the moon. Is. Go to the moon and just step on her house. <laughs> don't they like not know I where she is? I wasn't expecting this. Like How could they not know where it is? I don't know. They're stupid. They're really stupid. Zordon is the most ineffectual leader ever. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, uh, Spider-Man is sick of just not being in the book anymore, so that he frees himself, and then <laughs> Ramjet's like, "Hey." <laughs> I'm supposed to guard you. And then Doctor Doom double crosses Ramjet, and then he zaps him, and then Spider-Man and Doctor Doom team up, and then... Oh, God. uh, Because they zapped me. How dare they? That's right. I betrayed you to work with them, and then they betrayed me, so now let's work together and beat them. Even though I'm supposed to be dead anyway. (laughs) So... (laughs) Well, it's a Doom bot. Don't worry, at the end... That's why it's so irrational and weak and lame. I mean, that would be a great way to retcon it, but they don't even have to, because no one freaking cares. (laughs) This isn't continuity. (laughs) Yeah, so... Iron Man and Megatron fight, and it's kind of fun, I guess. What does Optimus Prime do? He just kind of watches. Well, because he's got to be a battery. Yeah, I guess. No, he already was a battery. No, he's continuously a battery. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, he just was well, the one time. Well, that in. would make sense. No, no. You he... know what? He's he's uh, Iron Man's boxing coach. Be like, oh, I fought Megatron. Get him in the ring. Get, uh, get him on the ropes. Okay. Oh, watch out. He's going to blast you. Yep, yep. Dodge that. All right. Now a right hook. Yep. And punch him You're right in the You're a wrecking machine. <laughs> Move your feet. You gotta move your feet, Iron Man. Don't get stuck <laughs> no, on the ropes. There's actually a great moment where uh, Megatron like punches Iron Man and he falls down. And, the Me- and then Optimus Prime goes, if you need me to plug into you and give you more power, I can no. do that. <laughs> uh, how about you punch uh, Megatron? Could you please just do something? Do anything. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just charged you up again. That was yeah. pretty sweet. So then Megatron like blasts Iron Man's giant head off, but because oh. he's like Iron Man inside, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he's in the chest. And then, uh, and then, oh, Iron Man's in the chest. Yeah. And then the uh, the Autobots reveal that they have teleportation powers. So the Autobots and Wolverine teleport inside the Citadel. What? Oh, didn't you know? From where? From outside. Oh. So they. Why do. didn't they just do that at the beginning? Because there was a there was a that 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 energy thing. Around. Oh, they took down the energy field. I guess. <laughs> Why would we ever do that? Oh yeah, because uh, because oh, Ramjet Spider-Man was and... protecting it, so yeah. Doom took it out. Okay. So Jazz and Bumblebee show up with Wolverine. Meanwhile, Prowl helps out Spider Man, and he's like, "I got an idea," and so Spider Man offers to use his unique physiology and this convenient machine that Megatron built to soup up. Prowl. Oh, cool. Now Prowl's souped up. Yeah, but Wolverine thinks that, like, all robots look alike, oh. so that he goes to attack them, and then Spider-Man is like, oh, no, Wolverine, whoa, don't do that. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. Mm-hmm. We do not all look alike. You see this Autobot logo on me? <laughs> That's all the same logo. No, no, no. Mine's, no, no. Mine's red, and that Theirs one's is purple, purple, and right. it's a little, like, sharper looking. Yeah. 
Oh, has... excuse me. That's oh, totally realize. different. Also, I'm visually different from the other guy. <laughs> anyway, so... No, uh, no, you're just a giant robot car. So, <laughs> Spider-Man explains the plan to Wolverine, and then Wolverine's like, Oh, well, since we've thrown away the plot anyway, now I can work with the machine, too. So then Wolverine plugs into the machine, and then he soups up Jazz what? and Bumblebee. And so oh, now... Oh, because he's almost... His blood was almost as good. Almost good enough. They so, did set that up at yeah, the beginning. they did set that well, up. The Decepticons wanted <laughs> the purest die. one... Yes. But now if we use both of them, yeah. it's like getting two mm. uh, soups up for the price of one. <laughs> or yeah. something. This is It's like it's written by like a six-year-old. I mean, it's, it's the Avengers versus <sighs> Transformers. What are you expecting? And, and then this happens. Yeah, and then and then he gets more powerful. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then... No, they didn't destroy the cube, or the crystal, by the way. Oh, no. So I don't know how the hell they fucking got out. Oh. Anyway, so... Well, uh, maybe the crystal <clears throat> isn't creating a barrier anymore. No. Now it's just like... They got rid of the barrier. Still just an yeah, angry wave. I think Doctor Doom tur turned off the, the, the barrier, but the crystal still... So what happened still, to the crystal? The crystal isn't... It's oh, still in there? Well, here's the thing. No. Uh, so, after everybody, like, gets on the same page... Mm. After all the Autobots get on the same page with Spider-Man and Wolverine, they're like, well, let's go get the crystal. And Doom's like, they moved it. Oh. Megatron had it moved when he like saw the tide of right, the battle turning. Lose, yeah. So we gotta go to where the new where the new location of the crystal is, and then we gotta destroy the crystal there. All right. Or Doom has to try and steal the crystal. Right. Except he doesn't and they so you know. So Megatron fights with That's bullshit. Yeah, I know. So Megatron fights uh Optimus a little bit, but mostly it's Iron Man. Like Iron Man is like little, but he's like, ah, I'm still cool. Oh, okay. So he I shoots say, did his head get cut off, but I guess he went back his to regular. His giant armor did. Regular like, armor. Yeah, Iron he just Man. went to regular Iron Man. Okay. Uh, so then Wolverine uses his uh his adamantium claws to shatter the crystal, which depletes the aggro wave. And so uh then Because with, now that it's not in a solid piece, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the crystal is plugged into, like, yeah, machinery and like, whatnot, just like it was in Ember of Doom. Yeah. So, I like that it's, like, hollow inside. Yeah, well, and that's kind of probably on by accident, but is in continuity because it used to keep Purple Man inside. It would have been cool if they'd put someone in there who was, like, angry. Yeah. Because that's like what the Hulk. Before. Yes, that would have oh. been a great way to get the Hulk in there. Yep. Nope. Damn it. That would have been awesome. maybe the Hulk was on Sakaar at that time. I don't remember. Anyway, yeah, it's like, yeah, like they, they, they don't care. They so, used to work by like, I put a guy in there and it gave me like amplified his abilities. Right. But if I don't put a guy in there, uh, it makes people mad for some reason. It's a different cube. They destroyed the crystal in Emperor Doom, so they just made... Yeah, they, but they it's just, the same technology, right? It is right? same technology, so it they should work They use that same. technology to... Yeah. Like, what is the active ingredient that, that makes people That would be great angry. if it was the Hulk. Or just any, like, someone any who has, character. like, yeah. mad... I the don't, I don't know only, and this is like just the people who are like, you can't put yeah. the Hulk in there because the Hulk would get angry and break out eventually. Yeah, but yeah, eventually. he's in a force field yeah, or he, something. Or he's, in a, he's in a state of unconsciousness Yeah, they, they use a psychotropic drug on Ooh, him and keep him under. How about this? It's Bruce Banner, and he's in a comatose state, but in his mind, the Hulk is trying to get out. And oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're using that. They're using his adrenaline of the yeah, Hulk. Anything. Out. Anything would have been interesting. Instead, we did nothing. So <laughs> Instead, you then, get uh, they they blow up the Citadel. Hmm. They destroy the crystal, so basically everybody's won. Yeah, they all win. It's and then Spider-Man shows up, and he webs Megatron, mm -hmm. and then Luke Cage pushes Megatron over like they're in a field cow tipping. <laughs> and Megatron is like, well, I've been defeated. Well, it's so, kind of like the Adats. Yeah, so then Megatron teleports away. What? What? Yep, Megatron and his Decepticons all teleport out of there. They, they, they orbital jump. Oh. I think that's what they're called. They're just like, or, oh, orbital bounce. I'm about say. to be defeated. I guess I'll leave. Yep. But I'll, like, leave by, like, antagonizing you by saying, like, I basically won. He's like, one day, he's, he literally says something like, one day, Optimus Prime, you and I are going to fight, and it's going to be really cool. Goodbye. But you right. won't see that here. Nope. Because the book's over. Because you had your chance. You were standing right there, and you, and you didn't do it. You pushed out. Yep. You let Iron Man fight for you for no uh -huh. reason. So then... Uh, I'm sorry, what did Captain America do this whole time? Was he little. actually fighting? He he flew the Quinjet. Oh, and, the like, Quin fired, like, lasers out of it. Oh. Like, other Decepticons. He, you know, he took... He, he, oh, he probably engaged in aerial combat, maybe, bingo. with the flying ones. Yeah, Yeah, him and Falcon. Yeah. So, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up. They want to get a debriefing. Uh, the Simcarian and Latverian forces, of course, also withdrew. Yeah. And uh, the Autobots left. And they and, and, and then they And they left. teleport without them knowing. They're like, hey, wait a minute, where'd they go? They're giant robots, but they disappeared. So uh, they completely miss it, and they're like, well, uh, that was pretty crazy. And then they scan the Quinjet that the Avengers are leaving in because they notice that Ramjet is missing. 
you know, this new character we mended for this because yeah. we forgot that Starscream died. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, wait a minute. That Quinjet looks almost Cybertronian. And then the new Avengers are like, wait a minute. This Quinjet seems a little weird. Nah. And you're like, oh, so Ramjet became the Quinjet? So now Ramjet's in the Marvel Universe? Yes, but he never untransforms. Yes. Because I'd rather just do my job. Yep. What? They're just making a little, like, that's dun, dun, dun. Maybe we'll do a sequel where, like, Ramjet's in the Marvel Universe or something. That's good. Weird. <laughs> Weird choice. Yeah. This is a bizarre <laughs> book, but I'm still having a lot of fun picking it the hell apart. It's, oh, yeah. So, like, if I was reading this, I'd be really upset. I, oh, my God. It's, it was really annoying. <laughs> it was like, I was so mad. So, uh. okay. The, the, the For me, the encapsulation of this book is... Because it's all a missed opportunity. It's all Bro, a great yeah. opportunity that just was completely squandered by like people who had no creativity. Yeah. The tagline of the book is Avengers Roll Out. Okay. Obviously, the tagline should be Autobots Assemble. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and there's like a running clock throughout the book. Where it's like the Simcarian invasion is going to happen in right. T minus eight hours, you gotta then have three the hours, clock. then two hours, and you're yeah. like, but it's not going to. We're we got three pages left. There's no way this fight's going to happen. Like what? Yeah, that's weird. Why? Why is the plot of this book not that like at some point? I mean, not the plot, but why at at some point do we not see the Avengers each like driving an Autobot? Right. Like I should see Cap in the cab. Of Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. Yep. Like going from one place to another. Like for 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 characters whose gimmick is that they turn <laughs> into transportation, <laughs> they don't go anywhere. Nope. They ne the we whole book is in one well, fucking place. Yeah. Why would yeah. we? Why would we go anywhere? We're already here, where the fight is. Yeah. No, they don't go outside. <laughs> yeah. They they literally they go. Page two. They're at the Citadel. They never leave the Citadel. <laughs> then the Autobots show up. The yeah. Autobots show up, and then they are no longer and cars. Then they yeah. continue fighting there, and then at the very end, they go like a little bit over there to get to get the, the crystal. crystal. Yeah, it's garbage. <laughs> they don't show them hiding in a city no. with other cars. They don't show them like using their camouflage in no. any way. They're just in the fucking woods yeah. the whole time. That way, they can keep their secret. That way, no one can know that the Autobots exist. <sighs> Yeah, like this giant just, decal on the car doesn't give it away. They should be in a city in fucking Latveria, and Doom's like, I, don't worry, no one will ever know. It's Latveria, I have total control Exactly! Of like, fuck you! Yeah. It's what a, a waste. waste! Yeah, it's total waste. How come Dr. Doom doesn't steal the Autobot or Megatron or uh, Decepticon technology? Yeah, make his own. That would be great. That would, that should, yes, yeah, he should have that plan, and then he gets thwarted at the end. Yeah, like, or, he, or does he? Or, do, ooh. He keeps Ramjet. Oh, like, and he's like torturing it. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'll unlock the secrets of like your energon or something. Yeah. Because like somehow you were life that was mechanical. Right. Like I don't yeah. get it. Because it's not like Ramjet's in the Transformers books. No. So you don't need him. Exactly. You don't... left him in the Marvel Universe anyway. So do something interesting with him. But again, though, we spend an hour <laughs> coming up with that idea. And that's way more time than Stuart Moore had. Probably. <laughs> To come up with this. I didn't spend any time coming up with that idea. I came up with it in like five seconds. After, I know. Like this, most of the time, we're just dissecting the crap they made. I can think of ten ideas that are better than this. I know. So in the comments Jesus. down below this episode, I want you to come up with your better pitch for a new Avengers Transformers crossover. Because like, and the the covers are the worst because they promise fun stuff. Yep. You're like, oh, Spider-Man versus Megatron, and of course, like Optimus and, and Cap. Nope. See, if Spider-Man defeated Megatron by just, like, talking to him... Right, being funny. And be and, and just reasoning, being like, can't do all this stuff, man. <laughs> Megatron's like, hmm, you drive a hard bargain, Spider-Man. No, no Megatron's unreasonable. Yeah, but with great power comes great responsibility. Oh, that's a good point. Interesting. <laughs> Never heard of this before. Yeah. Who told you this? Tell me more about these wheat cakes. <laughs> yes, good. Mm. <sighs> the star scream comes out, he's like, what's happening? <laughs> Go back to the kitchen, Starscream! Yeah, you're on monitor duty. Okay! <laughs> and make more of these weed cakes. <laughs> you can't eat weed cakes! You're you don't have a stomach! <laughs> it's just gonna gum up your works! And that's it. And oh, that we... my radiator no. is clogged! <laughs> <laughs> that's how Spider-Man defeats him. He convinces him to eat. You fool! <laughs> that's a better idea than that. That's, a, that's the dumbest idea. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's the dumbest idea in the world. And it's better than this. <laughs> it's better than this. Because at least it's an idea. At least it's anything. It's anything. At least it uses this, like the facts that they are transformed. This is like, it's like, almost like just the, the fact that it needed to exist made it into it. It's like they went like, they just had a pad of paper. And they went like, oh, New Avengers Transformers. Yeah, I'm going to get on that like right away. And then it's due tomorrow. And they went just like, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. And they went to bed. And when they woke up, there was just a story written. <laughs> just like, what do it, we do? it willed uh, itself into existence. Here's another question. How come they don't get any crazy spider powers from taking the energy? Right. Or like, like spider sense. Yeah. No. Or, or the, the ability adhesion to like, ability. Or, yeah, or, something. Or, yeah. Or how about this? It messes them up. Like, you shouldn't mm. make synthetic energy on. Right. Nope. Doesn't work Again, right. Again, no, it works perfectly. <laughs> it's exactly what they said for no reason. Yeah. Because they wouldn't know that. Like, yeah. Uh, Total waste of opportunity. But in case you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description box below the video so you can get a copy of it, which I'm sure it's out of print because... It better be. Well, here's the thing. It's funny because Marvel, at some point or another, just was like, we're not doing crossovers anymore. We may never do crossovers again. And they just stopped. So, like, DC's like, well, well, hold my beer because I'm going to cross over with everybody. And then, out of nowhere, Marvel started to work with IEW to publish, like, kids' books. So, there's a bunch of books. Spider-Man, Black Panther, The Avengers, that are getting books published by IDW. So, the opportunity for a sequel to this has never been better. Mm. Except we'd get a sequel to this. Well, or just, like, pretend. Do what Marvel does. I don't really regard the fact that you read comics 10 years ago. So here's just something else, and I'll pretend like that never happened. Oh, it didn't happen. Cool. But I have a book that says, no. There's a whole episode on the internet of these guys talking about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, try and buy it. It's not in yeah, print exactly. anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, new Avengers Transformers. I don't even know if it's even a good idea. Like, it's, now that I think about it, I'm like, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. <laughs> it's almost like you have no comic book experience whatsoever. You know that you need to have your character, you know the tropes, but like they're ha they happen at like the wrong time and the wrong order. And Well, you get Justice random. League He-Man. That's great. It's Injustice He-Man. But like- Oh, and Justice League He-Man. DC knows how to do it. But, well, that works. Yeah. They're people. There's magic involved. I'll take robots. The robots, if you treat them like people, they're compelling and they, interesting. Yeah, it could have worked. It could have worked. They chose not to try hard enough. Right. You could do a better job if you dealt with Cybertron mm -hmm. in space, having issues with, like, the Skrulls. Oh. Or, guess what? That'd Galactus, cool. Galactus is going to eat Cybertron. Cybertron. Yeah. Yep. The second, yes. That is, that is a great idea. That's way better than this. Yeah, I don't want to see Captain America and Optimus Prime team up. I want to see what a Cybertronian Herald of Galactus would look like. That's cool. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. Well, now that's sucks. in my head. Now we, I want that. We pitched you know, all these way better ideas. You know what the best part of this book is? The back cover has a fun, like, cartoonized version. Yeah. Like, oh, here's something that you'll never see. Yeah. Well, not only that, but, like, this is more what it's like inside. It's not exactly cartoony. No. There's, well, the, the, the art's, art's not, not like terrible. that. No. Well, but, it's not but the great. art's not good. Yeah. No. Not good enough for this idea. Right. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Bye. <laughs>